So now that you've had the basics and you, uh, you've worked with these two formulas for simple interest, we're going to take a little bit closer look at, at how we use these in more real contexts. Um, we took a look uh, last time uh, in the last video at the formula I equals PRT, where I was simple interest, P was what you borrow or what you invest, and uh, the rate was the percent that they charge you for using the money or that you charge them for using your money, and the time. We also looked at this formula. Um, the total amount is the principal plus the interest. So anything you borrow, you got to give back the principal plus what you borrowed in the first place plus any interest. So here's our first example. I want to highlight a couple key words. So we have a person buying a car, so they're going to borrow money to do it. I want you to think about what that word borrowed might mean. Which of those letters in, that, in those formulas might we be looking at here? We have a rate of 9% and three years. Um, there's three different numbers here. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to list these numbers, and we're going to figure out which of our variables are assigned to these numbers. So I want you to write the word list. You're going to do this every time because there's too much going on here. Until you really get the hang of this, it's very difficult to make sure that you've uh, done it correctly. So borrowed would mean this is the principal. This is what we start out with. And we define that as you know what we borrow or what we invest is principal. Uh, time here is three years. If you see the word years or months or whatever, remember if it's months, you've got to change it to years. So if it's six months, that's 0.5 years. 9%, I'm going to go ahead and change to 0.09. Obviously, that's R. If you see a percentage, that's R automatically. Change it to a decimal, though, because when we work with percents, we need to, to change it to a decimal. Two things we find here, interest and total amount. So two formulas I need to use. Um, we're going to have to use both here. Uh, I'm going to use I equals uh, principal times rate times time to find the interest. And then to find the total amount, I'll use the other one. I'll take the principal, uh, 15000 and add whatever I calculate for the interest. So the first part is to figure out what is the interest here for Jessica borrowing this money to, to get this car. So for that, they're going to charge her 3% of our 9% of 15000 for three years. So I need to pull out a calculator here. First, I'll do 9% of 15000 so each year, what this means, remember, so 9% of 15000 each year she's going to get charged $1,350. So she's going to owe a total of $4,050. And then for the total amount, all I have to do is take, what did she borrow in the first place? Remember, she has to pay that 15000 back. The bank's not just going to say, ah, sure, keep that. She has to give the 15000 back plus the interest, what she pays the bank for the convenience of using their money. Uh, so she owes a total of $19,050. That's what she bought the car for. She didn't buy it for $15,000. So there are my two answers. All right, take a look at another one here. Oh, here we have uh, someone investing money in a bond. So this, this one, Nancy's going to get paid by the bank for, uh, for, for, using her, for the bank using her money. So um, time is what we're looking for. It says how long. The T is in the I equals PRT formula. Hopefully, we won't even have to use the other one. So if I have I, P, and R, I can do I can solve for T. Let's make our list. Three numbers here, 6,000, 3, and 450. 6,000 goes with this word, invested. 3 goes with the rate. And interest, and notice interest. It doesn't say interest rate. It just says interest. Um, so the invested means principal. That's what she started out. She started out letting the bank borrow $6,000 of her money. That's what you do when you, you have a savings account. You're letting the bank borrow the money. I see a percentage there, so I'm going to write 3% and change that to 0 0.03. And then interest, that's I. So uh, it's 450. I want to point out, I want to stress that that does not say interest rate. If it says interest rate and it has a percent, then it's R. If it's a dollar amount, then it's interest. It's just common sense here. Now I'm just going to plug in what I know. I is 450, so instead of writing I, I write 450. Instead of writing P, I write 6,000. Instead of writing R, I write 0 0.03. And now I'm going to solve for T. First of all, I need to take 3% of 6,000. So I'll, I'll carry down the 450. I'll do 3% of 6,000. Uh, that gives me 180. So she makes $180 in each year. So divide both sides by 180, and that'll tell me how many years she invested for. 
two and a half years. So 180 each year, she got $450. Uh, so divide four, uh, 450 by 180, you get 2.5 years. Just using the formula there, plugging in what I know, what I'm given in the problem, and doing some algebra to solve. All right, next example. Uh, here we have uh, John's parents who deposited $1,000 into a savings account as a college fund when he was born. Um, so what they did, they deposited that money, and then they let it sit there. Notice it says they let it sit there for 18 years. How much will he have in his account? Well, think about this. He'll have not only any interest he earns, his parents earn from the bank, he'll also have the principal that they invested in the first place. So if we're looking for the total amount here. You see anything about the amount in the account? Uh, that's going to be uh, A, not I. So we're going to make our list. First things first. We have 1,000, we have 18, and we have 3.25. $1,000 says we deposited that, so that's going to be our principal, because that's what John's parents started with. They gave the bank that to begin with. 18 years, uh, that's going to be time, and the rate, notice it says interest, but it also says interest rate, 3.25%. Remember, interest is a dollar amount, so this cannot be I. It has to be something else. So, we have $1,000 for the principal. That's, what I, that's going to be part of the money in his account at the very end here as well. 3.25%, uh, change that to 0 0.0325, and then T is 18. So, now the issue is this. I have A, or I'm looking for A. I have P, P is $1,000, but I don't know how much interest John's parents earned. So if I don't have one thing, I've got to go to the other formula, all right? So if, if you need one, if you don't have enough information, that means you've got to go use the other formula to find the information you're missing. So for interest, I can calculate that by doing principal times rate times time. So 1,000 times 0 0.0325 times 18. So first thing I'll do is I'll do 1,000 times uh, 0 0.0325. That'll be $32.50. That's how much money they make in one year. Uh, and then for 18, they make that for 18 years. So they make $585 uh, in that, that little savings account there. Oops, erase this. It's not going to be much, much money, but notice they didn't put any additional money in. So just that $1,000 made uh, more than half of the original amount. So now that I know interest, now I can come back to what I really wanted to find. I didn't want to know interest. I wanted to know the amount in his account. His account's going to have that $585 the bank gives them plus the $1,000 they invested in the beginning uh, for a total of $1,585. So that's the amount in the account after 18 years when John's ready to go off to college. All right, last one here. First thing, what am I solving for in this problem? Notice in the question, it says, what interest rate? Interest rate would mean R, not I. Again, careful on that. So we're looking for R, not I, which means I need to use the I equals P, R, T formula. That has an R in it. So if I know I, P, and T, I can just solve for R. So let's make a list to see what we do know. First of all, it says Mr. Mr. Johnson borrowed $8,000. Borrowed is going to mean principal. He borrowed that for four years and then he repaid a total. This is where it gets tricky. Repaid a total of 10320 I know principal is 8000 I know time is four years, but you got to think about what repaid a total means. You're not just paying back principal. You're not just paying back the interest. The bank's not going to say, ah, oh, forget about that $8,000. A lot of people misidentify this number as interest. It's actually the amount, A, because it's the principal plus the interest. It's everything you pay back. You see that word total? Don't label that as interest. In fact, if you label this as interest, you're going to end up with something ridiculously high for your percentage. If you end up with something over 20%, uh, over you know you're not really... You, 22% is a standard credit card. Um, so uh, you just be careful on that. So notice what I've done here. Um, I plugged in the 8004. I don't know the interest, though. So what am I going to have to do? I'm going to have to go use the other formula to solve for this. Okay. So again, I don't have all the information I need to solve for R, which is my ultimate goal. 
which means I have to go use the second formula to find that missing information. I'm missing the interest. But notice if I set up this equation, I can subtract 8,000 from both sides, and that will leave me with the interest. If 10,000 is the amount I repaid, if I subtract what I started with out of that, that's going to tell me that I owe the bank an additional, uh, let's pull out the calculator here, I believe it's $2,320, but that's, let's just check that. Yeah, 2320 I owe the bank an additional $2,320 for the convenience of using their money to make these home improvements. So now that I know that, that's another number I can plug into my formula here. And now notice I know three out of the four uh, missing, or three out of the four uh, items in this formula. Now I can solve for R. So first thing I'm going to do is 8,000 times 4. I'm just going to work on getting R by itself. So this is uh, 2320 equals 32,000 times R. And then I'll divide both sides by 32,000. When I do this, I'm going to get a really small number. And that might seem wrong, but remember, when you do this, you're not getting a straight percentage. You're getting a decimal. So I get 0 0.0725 for my, my rate. Remember, that's the decimal form. Uh, to get a percent, I have to take that and multiply by 100. So this is actually 7.25% for my rate. It's a very reasonable rate. Uh, it makes sense. Again, if you get something over 25%, you're probably not dealing with a, uh, shall we say, legal lending institution. Um, you're probably uh, dealing with the mafia or something like that. So. Uh, make sure your answer makes sense when you, especially when you're solving for rate. So, just to recap, uh, make figure out what you're solving for on these problems, make your list, and then figure out whether you need to use one formula or both formulas to solve for that missing, uh, missing quantity.